Lovely to see you again uh, in Amana, in Areo, in Ara Te Mihi. Um, wonderful to see you. It seems like just yesterday that we were all uh, gathering at the start of uh, Aotearoa conversations and the start of uh, the Social Enterprise World Forum. And, um, and here we are. We're all enriched and acknowledged and we know a whole lot more than we knew at the start of the week, perhaps. Um, we uh, feel like we've seen enough of our ca cameras and laptops and uh, screens. So um, uh, <laughs> I've seen Bruce has certainly put in some decent hours there. So it's, uh, it's been impressive to see what people have done. So um, yeah, so welcome folks. Lovely to see you. And, um, and, and thanks for joining us for this session. It's, um, you know, this is the stuff I love. This, this, is, this is the session for me because um, uh, this is where we get to leverage everyone's knowledge, everyone's experiences and we get to, um, yeah, share it. And so um, there's a bunch of sessions I haven't been able to make, and I'm sure you have, and vice versa. So um, yeah, this, is how we, uh, this is how we go forward to get us stronger um, and faster. So, um, so what we thought we'd do today is that we've, um, we've just shoulder tapped a few people just to, to ask them, um, I've got um, Liv, Bruce, Alice, and Zachariah, to um, just give some input or their thoughts, just to get us started on um, perhaps just a few minutes, three to five minutes on what you loved the most. You know, what was the session that really stood out for you? Uh, it'll be interesting if they're all the same session. <laughs> but we'll, uh, we'll cross that bridge if we get to it. Um, and um, yeah, so we'll hear from those guys. Um, uh, and then we've got a nice sized group here. So then we'll just be able to open it up and, and have everyone contribute perhaps their, uh, their, their favorite session so, um, so we can all hear. So perhaps when you introduce yourself, just introduce yourself as um, uh, obviously who you are, where you're, where you're calling in from, um, and if you um, have a, an organization, a whānau that you connect to, then um, please uh, share that too. Um, um, so again, just for the people that I haven't met, um, my name's Matthew Luxon. Uh, I'm actually calling you from Otatahi, uh, Christchurch, which is my hometown. Um, but these days I actually live up uh, just north of Auckland. So, um, so it's a beautiful blue sunny sky down here today. And, um, uh, and so it's good to be with, with my family. Um, I work with Akina, uh, very proud to work with Akina on the Impact Initiative with the Sector Development Programme. Uh, and also on their forward social procurement platform. So, um, so yeah, so we're going to do that, and then we'll uh, then we'll have a, a, a brief closing at the end, and um, and wish you well for your the rest of your Friday uh, afternoon. Now, can everyone hear me? Okay, just to make double sure, thumbs up. Yep, we're all good there. And um, and also just to let you know that the um, we're just recording this as well. Um, which I think he understands the, the drill these days. So if, if you're not wanting to be recorded, just um, turn your videos off and, and, um, and, and mute yourself. Um, so let's, uh, let's get going. So we've got uh, Liv, Bruce, Alice and Zachariah. So maybe if we go in that order, um, and I'll put you on the spot first, Liv. Um, and yeah, and I mean, the floor is yours. I'll, I'll have the stopwatch going just so that we don't, um, you know, have to do that brutal timekeeping thing. But, um, but uh, yeah, the question is really, what, what have you particularly enjoyed from this week, uh, for either Aotearoa Conversations or Social Enterprise World Forum? Um, yep, so hi, I'm Liv. Um, for those who don't know me, um, I live in Auckland um, and I work for the ANZ Bank and their procurement team, mostly looking after the property categories, a bit of professional services um, and talent and culture and also the sustainability lead so we have um we're part of the bio group for akina um, we are committed to the climate leaders coalition and we've also become a living wage organization in the last year um so my insights for this week um i thought it was really great value for 49 pounds there's been a lot of sessions there's a lot of content there's a lot of chat um that's been really good compared to some i guess some like day-long conferences that you go to for a couple hundred bucks um, I think the passion that's come through from all the social enterprises has been quite overwhelming. Um, I also really only had insight into what was happening in Australia and Canada and the UK. So to see how the rest of the world is really working in this space has been pretty impressive, um, especially in some countries that you probably wouldn't really think of being involved in this area. 
Um, for me, it's given me a bit more challenge um, to challenge our intent on what we really are trying to achieve. Um, I need to get a bit more buy-in and more direction, I guess. We have a overall strategy in the procurement team, but I don't know if it really extends much further than that. And we need it to, because we don't have the budgets to spend. Um, I think also we need to diversify our thinking to not just include Māori and Pacifica, uh, to not just include social enterprises, but to also include Māori and Pacifica businesses. Um, our company purpose is to make communities thrive, so I'm always trying to bring it back to that. Um, I guess we do have a challenge as well with customers. We will never put a cust if we're dealing with a customer, we will no never choose to go somewhere else over them. Um, and I oh, sorry, sorry, Liv, what do you mean by that? That you would never um, like we will always consider working with a customer first. Ah, uh, yeah. So if a customer provides goods and yeah. services, you we want to give yeah. yeah. We want to give our customers business where possible. Yeah, makes sense. Um, I really enjoyed the session with John Holland um, and the Melbourne team about waste mm. and seeing how other corporates are involved. Um, that was, yeah, that was really good. And today's session about storytelling. I think I'm going to go away and have a good think about what other kind of things I need to help me with the storytelling because that's a big part of what I'm trying to do. Um, and then maybe I can give some of the, the social enterprises we want to engage with a bit more direction so they can then help, you know, spending time pulling together data that might not be really relevant mm -hmm. for what we need or can kind of help them with that direction as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's, when my, that's what I'd written down. Awesome. That's great. Thanks very much, Liv. That's fantastic. Did you, um, did you, um, were you able to stay on sort of in the evenings? There was no problem with time. So um, I did a couple. Yep. Um, I live on the shore, so it can, oh, you can't go anywhere it's been anyway. a bit of a nightmare <laughs> this week. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah so. but and, then, and, now, and now there's a storm coming, week. right? The, the, yeah. for the, for the road coats yeah. on the road. I'm about to drive over there in a couple of hours. So, yeah, we'll so it's looking all right today. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Oh, that's wonderful, Liv. Thanks very much um, for that. Uh, Bruce, can we um, hand the talking stick to you and uh, get your, your insights? Thank you, Matthew. Kia ora tato. Um, I am Bruce and speaking to you from Wellington. I uh, said in a couple of the other sessions that I recently finished doctoral research in social entrepreneurship, particularly social entrepreneurship in the context of faith-based organizations, faith-based individuals. Um, I work as a global consultant for an international agency called uh, International Ministries related to American Baptist churches in the United States. So I work primarily in Southeast Asia, although around the world with um, faith-based organizations engaged in community development, meeting human need, um, structural change kinds of initiatives from that basis and have worked in community and economic development basically since uni, after I graduated from uni, and have really incorporated social entrepreneurship as a strategy, um, promoting it with a lot of the organizations that I've work, been working with and hence the doctoral research. Um, I also found this week to be incredibly rewarding for me, uh, both the Aotearoa conversations as well as the Social Enterprise World Forum. Um, it's hard to point out individual um, sessions that were tremendously influential because so many were for me. Um, I, I thought I would identify kind of three main highlights um, for me for the week in terms of themes. Um, the first theme, uh, the first aspect that just impressed and inspired me were all of the stories told by social entrepreneurs, the stories of their organizations, the presenters. Um, yeah, they were very in, uh, informative on the topics, but it was how inspirational those individuals and their stories were for me. Um, also really expanding my view of social entrepreneurship and its expressions all around the world. Um, a highlight uh, presentation for me during the World Forum was a session on social entrepreneurship in development, especially in a COVID era, 
where the five presenters were South Korean social entrepreneurs that have started enterprises or sponsored, supported enterprises in Africa and many other developing countries. Uh, it was fascinating to listen to them and to have them describe their experience as social entrepreneurs in development from their perspective, from their reality. And I just, that was so good. Um, so is the narratives. Um, I think a real challenge on those stories that I kept hearing was that we don't have a common language to describe what we do and why we do it. There's so many terms, there's so many definitions. Um, everyone kind of rejects, as soon as a term becomes popular, then it's like we have to reject it and come up with a new term. Uh, and I think that, that that's a barrier uh, for the movement as a whole. Um, the second theme that I just think was so strong throughout the conversations as well as the World Forum was this strong theme of indigenous and non-Western social entrepreneurship. Uh, so, such an important topic. Um, and we have just heard that so many different ways. Um, I think a key in all of those presentations that I heard was that social entrepreneurship is about both being and doing. Um, and that being is being in community. And that being is the foundation of our doing as social entrepreneurs. Um, so there was the dismantling, decolonializing de de session um, earlier this week, which was pretty significant. And in many different ways, countering this sort of um, triumphalistic American style, managerial, individualistic Silicon Valley model of social enterprise that is, is pretty popular um, in some circles. So as a counter for that, super important. Um, and so all the emphasis that all of the, all of the impacts actually spring from the inputs of one's culture, one's values, one, one's faith, and especially in the context of a community. Um, and that was just, you know, what a, what a great partner that was for me uh, for the business planning, the, the more, um, the social lean canvas material and the impact analysis material, this kind of the more nuts and bolts, um, it's easy to focus on that. And I think that, that what the whole indigenous and non-Western social entrepreneurship focus did was say, yeah, that's important, but let's pay attention to foundations too. Um, so that's, you know, th that was a real strong thing for me. And, and I think the challenge is how do we get wider recognition of that in the field? How do we run against the, the sort of Silicon Valley view of, of uh, managerial individualistic social entrepreneurship? I think that's always gonna be a challenge. Um, and then I think the third highlight for me is you. you know, all of you that I'm staring at in little tiny boxes on my screen. Um, th that was a highlight for me, um, especially in this context, more so than the World Forum. The World Forum, because it was a webcast, it was a much more impersonal. And so it was harder to feel that kind of connection. But, but boy, all during the week, you know, recognizing faces and hearing stories. And that was just so important. And it, for me, it highlighted the importance of the network that, that, it, that exists, even if informally, um, that is so necessary to, to advocate for and to mentor, you know, current and future social enterprises. So that whole, how do we create strong umbrella organizations? How do we create strong networks of networks? I think was a, a strong theme for me and super important, I think, for the movement. And I think especially, as I've said a couple of times already, here in Aotearoa, um, where I think in other countries, there is a strong national network. There is a strong network of networks. And so, for example, the material that, that Annie, hi Annie, and her partner presented um, on backboning, I think was really important. Just the previous se session today, you know, on structures for systemic change was really all related to that. And so, yeah, I, you know, I think that's really an important challenge for us here. So thanks, Matthew. Legend. Thanks, Bruce. That's awesome. What a great summary. Yeah, there's, um, it's cool to hear that stuff, you know, and, and um, like I said, this session is so helpful just for 
sharing all of our knowledge now, but um, uh, it's also really helpful for all of our work. And, and one of the jobs you know, we're involved with at the moment is the sort of trying to uh, make some recommendations to government so it's um and and uh and to colleagues and and see where we go next with the end of this program so all of this is very very useful for that as well so thanks very much um alice you're next up a bit of fun um amazing to be here at the end of the week i know i've still got a very long list of uh videos to go back and watch um a hundred and what is hundred and sixty eight hours in the week definitely not um not enough and uh my kind of wrap up thoughts echo quite a lot um to what Bruce and Lib have already touched on kind of sort of three three key takeaways for me um and 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 same as same as you bruce that that indigenous worldview and the cup of like community led initiatives um relationship based partnerships and all of that being woven into or even even becoming the means for social action and procurement um, and there was a there was lots of different echoes of that throughout all the conversations and the change that would bring to the sector uh, from a procurement lens um, and that's the, that's the kind of lens that I'm coming at this at so I work for Waka Kotahi, the New Zealand Transport Agency um, I've got that public, public procurement practitioner background now I'm in the capability space trying to bring to life the government broader outcomes obviously social enterprise social value social benefit suppliers are exactly where that channel should be going um, so a lot of the struggles and challenges that were brought to life these conversations are you know very real in our context but obviously echo the same in the Australian context the Canadian context the UK context as well so although it was um, sad to hear that there are the same challenges across the sector it's also heartening because then we can connect over them and, and sort of solutionize together so yeah the first one that indigenous worldview um, and bringing that into into the fold um, and not in a sort of tokenistic um, or uh, yeah not like a tokenistic kind of sense but actually uh, allowing indigenous voice to speak for themselves and to create space for that that voice to really reverberate across across the sector um, the second one is more about that procurement function and the procurement practitioners and that the the transformation that needs to go on um, in our own sector and I think the the original conversation has gone from we're not gonna we're not just buying stuff anymore now we're gonna do like social procurement but it's not just this sort of like oh we were that and now we're this there's a whole um and I think they talked about it in some of the earlier sessions a whole change management piece and I think to look at the procurement practitioner group and say do you see yourself as change makers you know and, and change managers they'd be like I'm just a procurement person, you know, so that kind of that kind of like self identification and therefore action and attitude and approach that we have to procurement processes. That's a huge transformation to undergo. Um, but I really like that that came through in so many of the talks um, from both buyer and supplier side. I really liked that. Um, and the third is probably around that reporting, monitoring, tracking, success and change. Um, that still feels like a really significant challenge for the sector and that's when you're on the social service side, but also when you're on the buyer side, but also when you're on their supplier side and you aren't operating in the social space necessarily, but you're subcontract, subcontracting out activities to p potential social enterprises. How we report all that back on a government level, I know in our, our community here in, in Aotearoa, from our public sector community, that is a real struggle how we get that government reporting we've got um, requirements to, to fulfill from from cabinet reporting um, perspectives our own agencies would be asking for this kind of reporting so it's tracking that in a meaningful way it doesn't just you know tick boxes a KPI and congrats us we've done so well you know actually being able to track that meaningfully and, and in some cases we won't see true community benefit for 6, 12, 18, 24 months down the line and having that patience to actually realize that outcome come to full fruition I think that's something that is also part of that procurement transformation and I think uh, I think I'll, I'll, I'll wrap up with um, what's super clear is that the collective learning space and the sharing space that these kind of platforms have provided is is essential um, and fundamental from both a global support perspective but also a sense of connectedness um, and I think because a lot of the social enterprise well all of the social enterprise sector is set up from like heart-based movements you know people are passionate about 
making change and creating impact and for some that impact is 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 real on other people's lives you know changing the trajectory of people's lives or on the environmental side trying to recover from a lot of the damage that we've created already so that's a really heartfelt sector so when you're coming against uh, struggles and disappointment and failures to be able to tune into a forum like this and share those problems and know that you're not alone and be able to have the very tangible connection that this kind of forum brings I think is absolutely phenomenal so I'm um, I'm actually grateful that COVID has enabled this to be online because I think that so many more practitioners and people in the sector have been able to reach in and feel connected because of it so COVID has brought us a good thing <laughs> that's all that's for a, me that's a that's a great point Alice yeah I think you're right that um traveling all the way to Halifax um yeah it would have been a lot less uh, a less of us there for sure so um yeah that's wonderful. And um, okay, thank, thanks for that. And um, uh, Zachariah, uh, are, you, are you there? Yep. Are you able to share your thoughts, Zachariah, on, on the week? Hakadai Lava, thank you very much. Um, thank you for, um, and which I don't take lightly, uh, the opportunity just to share some thoughts and some perspective about um, this week. Um, I just want to start by a, a quote from the second day from Clinton Schultz, and which he said, the whole notion of social enterprise comes naturally to Aboriginal people that is related to the connectedness to their land and to them as people. Indigenous people have a lot to teach the social enterprise community about how to do this well and how everything we think and do can positively benefit everyone. Malo ni, my name is Zachariah Rorolu. I'm born in New Zealand from um, migrant parents from one of the re most remote places in the world called Tokalau, which for many people do not realise is part of New Zealand. We are part of the Pacific community here in New Zealand. And if you look at the data across Pacific, we are the worst of the worst. Yet, the narratives that was written about my community in Porirua do not reflect my childhood growing up because I do not see or experience poverty. I saw duty of care to the elderly. I saw how intergenerational family, actually I saw the growth of home ownership in the 70s of collective well-being. So I left Porirua College with no formal qualification and worked I'm currently doing my master's and never been to university in a program at Victoria University called Innovation and Commercialization. My why is my motivation to tell our story that can actually enhance the well-being of not just Tokelau, not just Pacific, not just Māori, but New Zealanders. And so doing this program was never about doing a research and coming up with a research. It was actually looking at a business case and how I can take Pacific minds and influence mainstream. This forum here, I have attended to try and find a linkage. And I'm really thankful that it took the last um, conversation at one o'clock that really made sense why I was here in this journey. When I heard the two presenters talk about system and structure change. I've been embarking on my thesis to how to implement my Tokalauan cultural framework into the New Zealand, the New Zealand Treasury Living Standard Framework that talks about well-being. It is a lonely journey when you don't have any previous academic background, but we do have a real story. And I see real positive how we can actually influence that, not just for Tokelau, but for New Zealand. And so I'm motivated to speak on the shoulders of many of my pe people that have passed away to reach our narrative to somewhere that can assist me to help me in this journey. In Polynesian history, Tokelau 
means the northern wind of Polynesia. And so as you hear my voice, I pray that it may resonate with what you're doing that can be part of an infrastructure and a roadmap through social enterprise to get the commercial and more importantly, the social impact that we want here in New Zealand. And I find it really ironic that as the smallest community of all Polynesia in New Zealand, the Tokalawans, I can start with a small group because we are connected, we are celebrated, but more importantly, we can actually agree. And if we can do something that is working for that small community that has been written by many researchers, say we are the poorest of the poor in terms of all social outcome, then how much change that we can do for other ethnic groups, not just here in New Zealand. And so the privilege to tell that story under five, min five, five minutes is, is something I do not take lightly. I have to apologize that I have to excuse myself to go and pick up my kids as part of duty. I've asked the school to hold the children because you don't know what five minutes can do for my life and the life of those such as my children. So no doubt my name is on the screen. You're most welcome to reach out. I would love to engage. I do not know what I can give, but I'm sure like the journey from the beginning of the week of this forum to the end, it's like a organic system of trees as the picture that was painted in the last conversation. In that organic forest, all of us are in there. It is discourse, it's confused, but together we bring something that is unique about each of us to make the organic system work. So that's my kōrero and my story. I thank you very much. Before I leave, I would actually leave my details on the chat and then excuse myself to pick up my children. Hakate lava, manuia, and have a good weekend. I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> Kia ora, Zachariah. Thank you so much. That was really special, and I think it was probably a highlight for many of us for the whole week. So, kia ora. Mm. Yeah, you said you don't know what you can give, Zachariah. I think you just um, <laughs> gave a massive gift right there. So, um, uh, you're right. In five minutes, you've, uh, yeah, it's incredible. So, yeah, thank you very much. And, um, yeah, go and be with your children, and, um, and certainly we we'll look forward to connecting uh, more very shortly. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kia ora. Wow. Um, so folks, I mean, this is it, isn't it? That's uh, what Zachariah summed up there and what the, the others were talking about is um, when he was talking, I was sort of looking at the screen there and going, yeah, one of the things I've noticed in this World Forum is how lucky we are in Aotearoa because we are uh, small and so we're able to connect uh, comparatively to, to uh, some of the other countries. And so, you know, you can have people from government here, you can have people from the um, corporate um, sector for the intermediaries from the practitioners it's quite easy for us to all um, uh, connect with each other and so it's um yeah I see that as a massive uh, uh, benefit for for our community of social entrepreneurs here um, I think now we'll just open it up we'll just see if there's anyone else there's amazing people on this call and so um, we could go for hours but let's just um yes yeah, to see if anyone else has uh, Anything they'd like to add at this, at this point? Or any insights from your experiences um, from this week? Yeah, let's go. Uh, Ross, please. Hey, it might, it might be useful if I can talk. Just first to check, can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. That's great. Okay. Perfect. Sorry, just to check, I thought I'd um, make a comment and, and some of you won't be surprised at me making this. Firstly, um, how come I, I came, come to be here? Um, I'm, shall we say, slightly older than most of you in this conversation. Um, I'm uh, 70 year old. Um, so a lot of you on the screen that in front of me look, uh, shall we say, somewhat younger. Uh, how I come to be here is as a result of conversations that were started through the help of Bruce Borthquist, who's on the, this call, uh, but also with Guy and Louise of Akina Foundation. And I think Louise has dropped off somehow. 
Um, but just to explain, I am a professional director. I'm on the board of companies and, and uh, some charitable trusts and chair some of them. I also uh, have a background in the public sector in uh, 30 years in the public sector and Treasury and the State Services Commission. Um, but my main reason for being here is that I, cha I chair a scholarship program called the New Zealand Harkness Fellowships. And as a result of that, I'm also on the board of something called the Axford Fellowship Program. The Harkness Fellowships sponsor people to go on study programs in the United States. The Axford Fellowships essentially are a reverse form of the Harkness and they bring people from the United States. And some years ago, they brought a lady, Mary Jo Kaplan, to New Zealand who did a pioneering study on social entrepreneurship in New Zealand. And that's led on into other uh, reports and work that she's done uh, that has been some you know, really interesting and helpful research and, and I think in some of the previous conversations this week, some of her work has been referred to in uh, some of the linkages that have been put up on screen um, by, amongst others, Stephen Moe, who you might recall um, being part of these conversations. So what I'm about is that um, the Hartness Fellowship Program has benefited from some new funding from the United States Embassy in Wellington. We have money to spend on sending people to the United States for study programs, and we've decided to focus immediately on social entrepreneurship. And so we are prepared to spend funding uh, on sending people to the US to um, link up with and build networks amongst like-minded people. Of course, right now, COVID has intervened. And so our program is on hold. We also, in recent years, have benefited from an endowment from the, uh, from the New Zealand government, the John Key government. We were given a, an endowment grant of $2 million. Uh, and that was focused on public sector um, people to go to the United States. So I know there's some of you on this call who are working, I already picked that work in public sector agencies like NZTA. So you might like to think about um, what we're doing, but we're narrowing down in, essentially in learning about, and part of my reason for being here is to learn about what you're doing and to glean ideas about how we might help uh, focus in our fellowship program in the social entrepreneurship field. And we're working with um, Bruce and uh, the Akina Foundation to help us do that. And we will, um, in the early part of 2021, next year, open up um, opportunities uh, as part of uh, our program to both v virtually, but also physically to travel to the United States when the opportunity is available. So, um, this week for me, I've been dipping in and out. I've, I've been busy on other things. I haven't been able to participate as much as you all have. Uh, I decided that I would have to make a point of participating in this particular session just to, to learn about what's happened during the week that I haven't been part of. Um, but I'm impressed by, by listening to you all, meeting you all. Um, as I've noted, my background is in the public sector, but I'm, I'm now in, involved in private sector boards and opportunities and charitable trusts. Uh, also, I chair a, a, an Anglican church um, a trust board here in Wellington, where, I'm, where I live, um, which is engaging in um, increasing work with street people and uh, social housing opportunities, etc. cetera. So, um, so here I am. But my main purpose in being here is my involvement as chair of the Harkness Fellowship Program, which is, has got a, a, a sort of almost like a 60, 70 year history in New Zealand, trained a generation of leaders in New Zealand, and we hope to continue that. But for the immediate future, our focus is in fact, as I say, going to be on 
social entrepreneurship, encouraging young people like yourselves to build networks, engage in international opportunities and um, experience, but with a focus on the United States, despite what you might hear about um, the leadership and the politics of the United States, there's a huge amount of um, stuff going on there that we can learn from um, as, as we've already experienced from Mary Jo Kaplan. Enough, so that's enough from me. Fantastic, Ross, thanks very much. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's amazing, isn't it, who you have on a call and, um, and, and what we're all involved with and how easy it is to start connecting um, people together. It's, uh, yeah, and, and I work in the waste sector and the States has been a massive inspiration for us for a long time. Um, you know, urban ore in, so, in San Francisco and they've been going 30 years as a social enterprise diverting waste in downtown San Fran. And um, yeah, it's, there's a lot to learn from, from, that, from that country. So wonderful. Thanks, Ross. Um, anyone else like to share some thoughts? Ellen, you know I'm going to put you on the spot if uh, no one jumps in. Which is looking that way, so off you go. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to jump in. Thanks, yeah. Matthew. Um, first, like a big, big thank you to all of you for being with us throughout the week. Um, it's been really amazing. It's been, um, it's been like a bit of a marathon this week, but um, it doesn't even feel this way because it's, it's been really inspirational, uh, really motivating, um, and really great to hear all of these stories. So. Yeah, thanks for your time. Um, I think, you know, I would probably pick up on a couple of points that were already made. Um, you know, Bruce told about, talked about the stories and the people, and I think um, Alice as well, you talked about, you know, the, 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 the ability to engage online and how rich and deep that actually was. And one thing that I've noticed across the other organizations in, in the Social Enterprise World Forum is um, kind of a different type of transfer of knowledge in a way, because people, I felt like people went so much more deep, like with mm. their stories. And mm. um, I don't know if it's a result of, you know, um, the, the crisis, but for some reason there was, even in the plenaries, like there, were, there was um, just like this granularity around stories and insights and wisdom being shared that I felt was um, just very useful and very practical. So um, it wasn't just about like putting like great success stories under the, under the spotlight. It was like real, um, great opportunities to, to upskill. Um, um, so I thought that was wonderful. Uh, another thing is, um, there were a lot of conversations that proved that people were thinking more and more about system change and how social enterprise contributes to it. So there were loads of conversations where, you know, place-based, community-led initiatives were really woven with, you know, the bigger purpose of creating long-term systemic change. Um, and again, you know, back to the crisis and, you know, just I'm obsessed with like finding silver linings in this situation, but, you know, like I think lots of entrepreneurs and innovators have actually um, talked to the fact that because of the crisis, putting things into perspective in a way, you know, the bigger threats uh, and wicked problems that we're facing, which aren't new, suddenly like maybe like it puts some perspective in, in, into it. And um, they just saw the opportunity to innovate right now, not just to solve the immediate problem of the COVID-19 crisis, but, you know, it, at the same time, like thinking way like bigger and longer term. Um, so I think it's been really, really fascinating to find the magic in these like really thoughtful initiatives, starting with the people, with the values and with the context of places while thinking, you know, super strategically about what that means in the wider context and on the longer term and how that contributes to like, you know, deeper system change. So I thought that was amazing. And we saw that in quite a lot of the presentations um, here during the day as well in, in our uh, New Zealand conversations. Um, and I think the last thing for me is I've heard a focus on people even more than ever before. And I've, you know, it's not new to our sector, right? I mean, we talk about people all the time. We work for the, the well-being of people and, you know, for our co communities to thrive. But, um, you know, loads of people have like really gone back to their people, the people they serve, the people they work with, you know, their needs, their skills, like what was there in terms of crisis, in terms of skills and capacity and how these could be, 
you know, applied to, uh, you know, um, solving problems. Um, so, yeah, um, I just, you know, that was like through like the Kai Collective approach, uh, the Nahiri Communities approach, uh, you know, like people in Australia I talked to, it was, um, it was really present. Um, and I think, you know, it's quite natural and obvious when you say it, but how good does it feel that we actually talk about it in a way that's even more articulate than ever before? And it's part of the Kopapa and it's part of the values and we really celebrate it. Um, I think is also like creating amazing results. So um, yeah, it's been, it's been really nice and uh, yeah, really heartwarming. Thank you very much. Excellent. That's um, that's awesome. Welcome, Tara. Lovely to see you there on the keeping it real on the streets of, uh, of uh, Gleninus. <laughs> Feel free to do a pop quiz if you want to see anyone on the street. You ask them about so with your opinions on social enterprise. Um, yeah, great. Thanks. Thanks very much for that. Anyone else um, have anything you'd like to share, Lou? Yeah. Um, thanks for that. And and Elaine, um, I think. You know, a lot of your reflections, is, it, it, it's really heartwarming to think. And I, I I wasn't in Ethiopia last year, but I've been constantly this week going back to my experience in Scotland, my experience in Christchurch and how it is different. And I think it's not only my context has changed and I know more now than what I did then and I've learned more. And, you know, and so my perspective is different. But I think the strength of the conversations is different. The confidence of the conversations the, and maybe COVID gave people that to go well we're not just on the side anymore you know and and that that was really apparent it was it it was hard being an online um mm. event because the one the things that I got the most from Christchurch and, and you know in Edinburgh was you were inspired by somebody and then you could go and talk to them you could make that connection straight away um so that was never going to be the possibility of this, right? But it was, I felt like, oh, God, I would have loved to just grab you as you came off the stage and had a conversation, you know, so that was hard. But the one thing that I, um, I've, i you know, I, I agree, and like Alice said, you know, I've got hours of, of um, ones that I need to go back to, or actually I didn't hear that person to the degree that I wanted to, and I wanted to go and dig a little deeper, you know, so I've got all of that work to do. But the one thing that I was really proud about, and I know we led this from New Zealand, and I know other countries also had this priority, is the voice of youth. Like it wasn't a side event. It was, that was the inspiring conversations. And um, I think their honesty, and particularly some of the young women that I heard, their honesty, honesty in their bravery to say what they needed to say. I mean, there was one woman I heard, um, Rona, from Australia, mm -hmm. holy mother yep. of God. Yeah. I was yeah. just like, yeah. my Lord. Like, And yeah. she said this one line and it really, I've thought about it a lot. And she said, uh, did you hear it, Matthew, about the yeah. anthem, the Australian yeah. anthem? Mm. And she yeah. said, for anyone who didn't listen, she said, mm. our anthem says that we are young and we are free. And that is entirely not the situation in Australia. We are not a young nation. We are the mm. oldest nation in the world and we are certainly not free. Mm. And it just like, it stopped mm. me, like my breath stopped. And mm. I was like, there's not many brave people who would say that and yeah. to absolutely stop like yeah. the collective, you know, it was just like, holy shit. Yeah. You know, that's the stuff that you know we wouldn't have had if it was an, if it was an in-person event. She wouldn't have gone to Halifax in, this, in Canada, most mm. likely. You know, so how can the Social Enterprise World Forum and us, and you know, in thinking about it in a New Zealand context, how can we enable that, where you can continually have all of that, where young people feel their presence is not just valued; it's essential but it's accessible when they might have barriers that maybe, you know, a different generations don't have, whether it's through that you know, they're working um, in a social enterprise or that they're a person in their organisation that maybe wouldn't be at the top of the list of the travel list, you know. So mm. how can we ensure that that is something that we, um, you know, develop and, and enhance and, you know, look after? So, yeah, that, that was for me um, the the biggest um, takeaway that I took and it's something to share back with the World Forum is that they got that right. Mm. Youth wasn't a side event. 
It wasn't mm. another thing that then reported back on. It was actually the conversation. Yeah. And not many big events like this have that focus and that was that changed it for me after, you know, year three going to the you know, going to the World Forum. Mm. Yeah, that was amazing that session. I was the same blew me away and I was just like, all right, job done. <laughs> and then it just seemed to step out of the way now. It was incredible. And um and, and you and I was sort of thinking, yeah, I've heard that anthem so many times, you know, I don't know, mm -hmm. hundreds of times and never never occurred to me at all. And she yeah. just truth just dropped and you're like, Okay, yep, that's a Yeah. Annie, you like, were gonna say something? Mm. Yeah, is that is that okay? Absolutely. Um it's been yeah, I was Really looking forward to this session because I wasn't able to make a lot of them. And so it's so valuable to hear what everybody has heard across the different sessions they've spent time in. And I was really interested in um, a conversation that emerged during our session around, um, you know, what Matthew touched on, the, the recommendations going forward. And so I was just, I just made some notes, which I thought I'd share while everyone has been talking. Mm. So uh, there's something really special about our context here in Aotearoa, eh? and our, the strength of our indigenous and other ethnic um, groupings, values, beliefs, practices that, that really are um, what make us special. Um, so I just thought, Sorry, I can't see which bits you can see. Perfect, so yeah, we can see that. But then I was thinking idea. about one of the things that was raised was, and I hear it again today, eh? what is the mechanism by which people can have the connection, have the learnings, you know, like maintain it? Um, and from my experience, you know, like communities of practice are really a beautiful way to do that. And they're not over-engineered. I think that's the thing. Eh? We want to keep it light touch. We don't want to need people to be like spending massive resource or FTEs to hold us something. So I thought I'd throw it into the mix. And if we think of the co a community of practice, and, you know, there, there are things that, you know, um, um, the things that I think might be really interesting to explore as a community of practice is this whole thing of connection, eh? So what is, what is the mechanism by which, or the community of practice can be the mechanism by which people are allowed to have this ongoing connection, the deep connections that people have talked about that they need in order to keep on the journey that is hard and feel connected to others. The other element is this one here about the learning, eh? So how, how are we sharing, how are we building the capability within and across the sector around the things you guys have raised today? The measurement, impact measurement around storytelling, eh? So that people are getting the tools and the practice, but in an informal community of practice. And then the other thing which is really, um, I heard was, or well, I think what's been missing is this one here. Okay, so people have been doing things quite, and again, I'm not from the sector, my apologies, but it's from what I've heard, is it sounds like it's quite disconnected and there are amazing people doing amazing things, but there is no collectivity. There is no leveraging of everybody, what everyone's doing for impact for Aotearoa and to reduce the inequities that everybody sees and feels. And so this is the other, the, so the, this important element of collective intelligence and collective a action for influence. Hey, to influence change, to influence systems change. I mean, that's the spot that I'd really like, I really see opportunity to strengthen. The beautiful thing about Aotearoa, two degrees of separation, this won't take <laughs> much. And so I really wanna say it doesn't need to be over-engineered. Um, it, it can be a simple um, movement that can be grown and, and hold its own without too much resource. But great conversations, thank you. Awesome, thanks Annie. Yeah, the, the, that is the thing. We've got to have a common purpose around that, um, you know, uh, impact in terms of social environmental impact. And, um, and, and so beyond that, the tent can stay very uh, wide, um, which, is, which is wonderful. And it's interesting what you're saying. I was actually talking to Lou earlier this morning about this and this analogy that I've had, um, I sort of imagining uh, Mirai or, or my own house, actually, we've got a bunch of people there at the moment. And, how you can end up with uh, one person doing the dishes and then someone else comes along and starts wanting to do dishes as well and everyone's wanting to do dishes but no one's mowing the lawns, you know? And it's like, and, and, and no one's put out the rubbish and <laughs> you're going, why don't you go do the rubbish? I've got the, I've got the dishes covered, you know? Um, and that's what can happen when we're, we're not 
talking and connected is that you've got people building kitchens to do dishes um, when the lawns actually need mowing. So, um, so yeah, I think that connecting up with the deer is uh, is absolutely vital. My um the, the um just to give my thoughts on what I took away, I, I really enjoyed the session um, that Sean um, Barnes took uh, on procurement, and procurement's not as um, uh, necessarily as sexy as, as a bunch of other subjects, but it's... Um, well, I beg to differ on that <laughs> one, but... <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, you and me both. Um, and so we're, um, I, I found that session amazing. There was that one that you mentioned, um, Alice, and, and Sean's one, and just this idea of scale, you know, and I was blown away by um, uh, that group and Australia Outlook that have uh, social enterprise that are doing $20 million turnover in terms of staff and 100,000 tonnes of waste um, that they're managing uh, through that business. And just because of the, the pod, they had a, the framework uh, from, from legislation, from government, and then they have the um, private and, and social enterprise sector uh, connections. So it's, um, yeah, that was, that was very inspirational. For, for us there. So folks, it's getting to that time. So what, I'm, what I'd like to do is um, I asked um, uh, uh, Lou, good friend and colleague Lou, to um, open uh, the Aotearoa conversations when we began on Monday and um, I'd like to extend, extend that offering to her again to um, uh, perhaps have the, uh, the final word and, and send us on our way um, now, if that's right, Lou. Yeah, thanks, Matthew. Um, and uh, as a just a slight context, I've just come from talking to about a hundred young people um, as part of the youth the US Youth Council um, organised by the US Embassy. Um, good plug in there, Bruce and and, and Ross. But um, it was really interesting because I was reflecting to them around the World Forum and around the conversations that we've all been having this week globally around you know the the importance of impact the importance of connection the importance of sharing success and failures and um, you know what that's meant to us um, as a, as the journey of our Kina, what it's meant to us individually um, and I think that this is another milestone for us um, and we've always said uh, from social enterprise um, in as its growth in New Zealand um, in, in these modern-ish times, that the Social Enterprise World Forum in, in Christchurch was a pivotal moment of, of gaining a strength, of gaining confidence, of gaining the voice to have on the global stage. And, and I think now it's about, we know we've got that, but what do we do to strengthen our voice here in Aotearoa? What do we do to enable that voice to have significant um, influence in the the Aotearoa New Zealand that we know we need as a result of COVID, as a result of the economic crisis that we're facing, as a result of the generations of inequality and systemic um, you know, racism and all of those things that existed well before COVID. And I think that while it's not about diminishing our voice on the global stage, it's about using the power of that voice for benefit here in New Zealand. And as we come into um, the end of our partnership with government, which was to set up the thriving social enterprise sector, which enabled this to happen, this week to happen. Um, it's about how do we do that? And to Annie's point, what is the connection that we must all have to do that collectively? And I think that that's something we all have to not only commit to being part of, but to open the space for others who maybe aren't here and to, to get them to be confident enough to not only want to contribute, but see the power of contributing to this group. And um, it's a challenge, I think, that Matthew, you've taken up the widow um, to be able to think about that with us. Um, and I think it is a really um, important outcome for me, uh, not only as the, the chief executive of Akina, but also on the governance group of the partnership with government of how do we enable that. Um, because I don't want to appear virtually or in person a year from now at the World Forum and to have lost the desire that we know we've all seen this week to, to make the change. And that's the responsibility I think we all must take. Um, so how we reflect on that for the next couple of weeks and what's the action from there, I don't know. But um, I think it's a, it's a really important um, 
challenge that we all must have is that now what happens here in New Zealand? How do we strengthen and enable social enterprise to be a significant part of not just the conversation, but the economy that we, that we know and deserve um, as a result of COVID? So with that, um, take that weight in whichever way you want to, but recognise that we're all here with that collective purpose and the strength of us together is much, much more um, than what it would be apart. So um, that takes time and there's that great statement of, you know, together we go slower, but we go further. Um, and I think that that's something that um, I hope you will join us on um, the ongoing conversation about um, and turning that conversation into to action and, and a long-term um, legacy for, for what we're doing here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. So um, go well, go safe, um, and please know that you know your voice and your insight strengthens us all in, in the work that we do, um, you know, not only at Akina, not only as part of the Impact Initiative, but, but wider than that. Um, a couple of thank yous um, to Alain, clearly. Um, you know, you are the chair of the World Forum, but you are such a significant part of the conversation here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. So um, you've done an extraordinary thing to make this happen this week, um, but it's not just this week. It's the last three years that you've been part of this journey. Um, to Tan and Karina uh, and Matthew, um, behind the scenes, a lot of stuff has to happen. Um, so you guys have really um, brought a co-papa in it um, to this that really is that inclusive action um, and we're very, very proud of you for doing that. So um, may we all um, not just get back together a year from now, that's the challenge. May we think about how we can connect and continue in the next days, the next week, the next month. Um, and then a year from now, we can celebrate that journey we've been on um, for, for the year ahead. So, ma, na mihi nui, um, uh, you know, go well, go safe. Ora, thank you very much. Have a great weekend.